As the clouds were sailing by, I watched the seagull swirl and fly. It was as if your mighty hand were painting art across the sky. A miracle before my very eyes. Oh, I marvel at the wonders only you can realize. But oh, There's such perfection in your touch for your creations are divine. A universe of endless mystery. Oh, when I contemplate your genius, it just draws me to my knees. Good morning. Welcome to South Ashford Church of God. It's good to see each of you here. Good to be in the Lord's house. Amen. Good to be with people of like faith and 
thankful for those watching online. Let's all stand together and let's call on the Lord this morning. Ask for his help in the service today that will be led of the Lord. And everyone will receive what they need. Those watching online and those here in this house. Let's go to the Lord together in prayer. Precious Heavenly Father. Everybody will be happy. We'll be happy. Oh. Penny March and our um, Sunday School offering. Teachers can take charge of their classes this morning. Those of you staying in uh, this this class, the adult class, we go back to lesson one. We did not finish last week. I'd like to finish that up today um, in our quarterly. Appreciate each and every one of you being here. We pray for those that are sick today, those that are hurting and going through trials, and pray for uh, Sister Angela's family. Uh, they have a Christmas thing they do every year at a certain time, and that's where they are today. Uh, let's remember them, but let's remember those that are sick, those watching online. We're grateful for them, grateful that you're here. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> All right. All right, our lesson, again, we go back to lesson one. Felt led to just finish this up. We, we, we talked about it quite a bit last week, but there was some undone business, so we'll finish it up today. Um, just to kind of briefly go over what we already talked about, um, we got several important points covered, but we return to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4. Last Sunday I shared with you that the book of Numbers, which is the book before Deuteronomy, uh, covered a period of how many years? Do y'all remember the book of, of, De of Numbers covers a span of 40 years, 39, 40 years, and we get into Deuteronomy, and I told you that that book covers what, about Remember, a month's time, about 30 days or so, a month's time in the book of Deuteronomy. That's what happens when you get the regular teacher here. You're going to start, start having quizzes. <laughs> Deuteronomy need, means the second law. You know, Moses has already given the law in, in Exodus when it was first given to those children of Israel. But this is the next generation, and we're facing the, the conquest of Canaan right down the road and this the second law is given not a different law but it's repeated to these uh this group of of israelites 
that have survived and grown up in the wilderness. Moses, in chapter 3 of Deuteronomy, just prior to this, is told by the Lord that he will not be allowed to cross over into Canaan, but will be allowed to look over into that land. And he now has, as we, as we begin chapter 4, roughly 30 days to pour into the new generation of Israelites all that he possibly can before he leaves this life. So the words we read here in chapter 4, they are those of a dying man. No, not he's not gasping for breath um, on his deathbed in his last moments, but a, a man whose time is and most definitely will be coming to a close here soon. And it is the last words of a person that somehow managed to gain a more attentive audience or approach by the hearer of them, correct? We know those last words are coming. We're really going to perk our ears up, and that's what that crowd was expected to be doing. And it is the person who has a limited time in which to speak, who will with care and deliberate focus choose only words that have lasting value to the hearer. Such is the case with Moses. He isn't telling jokes. He isn't beating around the bush. He isn't prophesying smooth things. He is methodically and purpose, purposefully pouring into the people he loves, the children of those whom he, have, he has buried in the wilderness. These are their children of the ones that he has loved and led. Um, he's purpose, purposefully pouring into this new generation by the power of God, the God who called him from a burning bush so many decades before. We know he's about 120 years old by now. He knows his time is short, and he knows what he says must be pointed, and it must be anointed. Amen? Proverbs 25 and 11 says, A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pictures of silver. Moses' perfectly timed words, they are valuable, and they are beautiful to the hearer. Apples or spheres made out of gold, they are also fit. They fit just perfectly into the lives of those receiving them, those pictures or those vessels of silver, the two mesh together beautifully. We have but a short time here. Amen? We are not promised tomorrow. We don't know when our last service will be for us personally or for us as a whole. We could be called by way of the grave today. We could be called home in the rapture. Praise God, yes, today. How important is it that every word that comes forth from this pulpit Amen? From our teacher stands, from our lives, be fitly spoken by the one sharing them. How valuable they must be esteemed to the speaker of those words and also to the hearer of them. I can imagine those people there in that, cloud, in that crowd that day looking to Moses, hearing his words, drinking them in. Uh, I can imagine them spiritually reaching to take hold of every single word that this man is saying. And I can imagine Moses pouring his heart out to them, ministering to them with urgency and with precisely chosen words of admonishment and encouragement, with what, they, what can only be described as pure love for their lives here and for their souls in eternity. A true man of God, a true woman of God, a shepherd guiding and leading his flock will do the same uh, in, a, in, a, in his final hours or as in every, every day could be your final moment. What are you going to say? What, what are you going to say that matters? It's so important. And with that short intro, we review the verses that from last week that we already talked about very quickly. If you're in Deuteronomy or you're looking at your quarterly, Deuteronomy 4, I'm just going to briefly, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 4 is what we did last week. Remember, verse 1 told them to hearken. He said, this is what you got to do, people. you got to listen. First and foremost, we have to listen. Verse 2 told us that you don't add or take away from God's word. It is what it is. Verse 2 says that, and he tells them that. Verse 3 says, don't forget what happens if you go after other gods. He recalled to their remembrance things that happened to others who had fallen away from the Lord and served other gods. And he says, don't do that. Remember what happens to them. Uh, and then verse 4, life is associated with cleaving to God. If you want God, cleave. Uh, if you want life, you have to cleave fast to the Lord. If you don't want life here in this life or in the next one to come, let go of him, be lax, those sort of things. Let him go. Be careless and reckless with your soul. You, it's your choice. 
but verse 4 says, you know, that, but they did, that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive, every one of you, this day. Now we move on to verse 5 and, and following to finish out this particular lesson. Verse 5 says, Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Moses taught the people exactly what the Lord gave him to teach them. He didn't teach them his own opinions or his own plans, what God gave him on Mount Sinai and what God gave him throughout his entire life of ministry. That and only that did Moses in turn teach the children of Israel. When he stood there on that day in the presence of the next generation of Israelites, he could boldly proclaim that he gave them nothing but what thus saith the Lord. And here it is again in this moment. He's saying, don't expect anything else from me. I'm giving you what God told me. Praise the Lord. The same testimony is spoken of by the Apostle John in 1 John 1 and 3, where he simply says, that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you. That which we have seen and heard, that's what we're given to you, not what we want to give you, but what thus saith the Lord. Not every pulpit can speak the same today. Not every church can proclaim such words of their own leaders. Soul dope peddlers and self-centered hirelings can be found in many a pulpit and teacher stand today. I cannot stress how grateful and thankful I am to have a pastor and to have teachers, to have leaders who desire nothing more and nothing less than exactly what thus saith the Lord. The audacity with, with which some pastors promote the world and embrace all that is ungodly for the sake of bigger crowds and larger bank accounts is something that makes me shudder. We have been given a pearl of great price, the keys to the kingdom. We have been blessed with what, what thus saith the Lord. Some of us for many years, for only some of us for only a few years, some of us for just months or days, however long you've served the Lord. But Moses didn't stop at reminding this generation that what he fed them was straight from God. He went on to instruct them as to what their, responsi their responsibility was with what they had been given. Plenty of people have walked through the doors of this church over the years seeking a message to suit or fit their lifestyle. Amen? Amen. Y'all get in this with me. Amen. They have, and we've done it ourselves. Uh, when we were first young in the Lord or even before we got saved, we did. The, I did the same thing, seeking a message. I wanted just something to, to say I went to church or to soothe the lifestyle that I was living. I didn't want really what thus saith the Lord. And so many people have through the years done the same, come into this house wanting what they want and want to include God with it. But I'm grateful to say there is, there's not, that's not what they found. It's not what I found. I found the truth here. And my life had to be changed. My life had to be sanctified. I had to be saved, of course. I had to be sanctified and worked on so that the Lord could work in me and through me and I could have that life that comes with those words. We found out what God had to say in this church and still do. Not what we want to hear. Um, and we, <laughs> we submitted to it, right? And our lives were and are continuing to be changed. Verse 6 Moses says in this verse, Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Remember verse 1 begins with hearken. It remembers it begins with listen. And now we get to the legwork of it all in verse 6. He says, Keep these statutes and do them. Don't just listen. You gotta keep them and do them. How many of you like, now be honest with me, how many of you like to keep things? Keepers, <laughs> like to keep things. Many of you maybe have a collection of some sort, coins, we have people that come in the bank, give me rolls of this, rolls of that, they're looking for coins. Or dolls, my mom collects dolls, or specific antiques. Maybe you have kept things like school papers from your kids, or maybe a lock of their hair when they were their hair was first cut. I have those for my kids, you know. Maybe you have tucked into a closet a shirt or a jacket or a tie, like we have, of a loved one who has passed away. Or maybe you're like my grandma Grace when she was living, and she just liked to keep a little bit of everything. <laughs> a little bit of everything.
different. <laughs> you and I keep things we place value on. Amen. One man's trash is another man's treasure. It is so true. And it's sad to say that some people don't value God's word at all. They're quick to trample it under their feet if they hear it at all. They have no desire to keep it. But the Bible is clear on what we as born-again believers are to do with the words contained in these eternal pages. We are to keep them, hide them, store them in our hearts that we may not sin against God. And why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we? Jesus said in John 6 and 63, It is the spirit that quickeneth. Brother Albright, you listen to that message now. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Praise the Lord. And to those who are keepers in today's church, I hope when I say you're keeping, you know, some people, some people don't keep anything. Is that Brother Shelton? We'd keep just what we used for that day, and everything would go in the trash. <laughs> it's very neat. My daughter Ashley takes from him. She's she's a minimalist. I mean, she'll keep exactly what she needs, and everything go, else goes away. But when it comes to spiritual matters, we got to keep it all. Right. Keep it all. Keep it. Keep it. Uh, Mark four and twenty four. I love this verse. And he said unto them, "This is Jesus speaking. Take heed what you hear, what you hear." With what measure you met, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear, shall more be given. The Amplified, I like this, what the Amplified breaks this down and tells us. And he said to them, be careful what you are hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you. And more besides will be given to you who hear. I'll say it again. And he said to them, be careful what you are hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you and more besides will be given to you who hear. If you keep them, study them, use them, they will multiply. Virtue and knowledge, I need that in my life, don't you? If I take in... Most of us, and I'm guilty of it myself, we take in what comes forth from this pulpit or we read some scriptures ourselves and then, I don't know, an hour later, what did the pastor preach on? Um, oh, what? <laughs> do y'all do that? Or you read something in the Bible and you try to remember the next morning? What was that scripture? We're human. We're infallible. We are, we are fleshly. We have got to put forth that spiritual effort and put in uh, some work to remember these things and call them to our minds and keep them because the measure of knowledge and study that I give to the word that's been given to me is what is going to come back to me in virtue and knowledge down the road when I most need it. Amen? So the more we study, the more we take in and put that to use in our own lives, it's going to multiply. That's what I need in my life, right? Amen? Do you too? You, do, you need that too, right? Those in that crowd listening to Moses that day were compelled by him to keep everything he was saying and to do them. James 1 and 22, we know this verse, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. And all of this keeping and doing had a certain goal that went beyond personal relationship and personal salvation for the individual. It was also for the nation of Israel itself, and it was for the surrounding nations, as mentioned in that verse. Moses went on to say, and these are in my own words, let this be our testimony to others that we've kept this, that our lives are dependent on it. Let it be our personal testimony, but we want other people to see this. Let this testimony that you serve the true and living God be a guiding light to the nations around you who do not know me at all. It's not just about you and me, is it? It's never been about those who are in the kingdom it's always been about those who are outside the kingdom. Luke 5 and 31, And Jesus answering said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they are sick. They that are sick. I'm, I'm thankful this morning to, I can stand before you and I can say I'm whole through Jesus Christ. But there are sick people in this world, sick people in this world that need a life lived before them that turns them to Christ. Keep these statutes the world needs to see me at work in the Lord and you at work in the Lord 
They need it so much. Verse 7 and 8, going on, verse 7 and 8 here in Deuteronomy 4. For what nation is there so great who have God so nigh unto them, as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? I'm going to read some from the quarterly about privilege, the privilege of having the word of God in our lives. Moses reminds Israel of the great privilege that they have been blessed with. They have received God's word <clears throat> in these verses, 7 and 8. He's reminding them of that. What a great privilege to have God's word. Oh, my word. What a great privilege. I like to hold it. Nobody, no, not everyone is so, was so blessed in those days as Israel was. They alone had the revelation of God's will and God's commands for right living. No other nation had received the Ten Commandments as their moral law. Um, no other people had been given the religious laws or civil laws that Israel had received. Likewise, likewise all we who have God's word in our possession and in our language are truly privileged. It is a shame that God's word is neglected in our nation today. Many of our leaders obviously do not feel that the Bible is really God's word and they do not feel that it is important. Our schools and courts have disdained the Bible as just tradition and fable. Even more sad is the fact that many Christians neglect and ignore the very Bible they are supposed to love and study. We mentioned this last week, but we'll throw these questions out here anyway just to keep us reminded. Have you read the Bible through? Do you read it daily? Do you study it regularly? Remember what a privilege it is to have God's word and give it its rightful place in your life. One day you will stand before God. And I'm sure that's going to be on the list, right? Moses tells Israel that they have received this great privilege, not because they were better than everyone else and deserved it, but because God loved them. Uh, in, verse, uh, in chapter 4, verse 33, Moses asked them, Did ever people hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire as thou hast heard and lived? In 4 and 37, he tells them that it was because he loved their fathers and chose their seed after them. Let us never forget that it is only by God's love and grace that we even have this word to God and direct us. Moses also reminds Israel that God gave them his commands for their own good. In 6 and 24, he tells them that the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our, for our good always, that he might preserve us alive. God's commands are not to hurt or hinder us, but to help and bless us. Amen. Moses did his best to impress upon the people of Israel what a privilege it was for them to have the words and commands of the Almighty God in their hands. Many of them did not esteem the words of God as they should have and took them for granted. In our day, we see much the same conduct. In the world, there is no respect for God's word because there is no respect for God. In the church world, there is little respect for God's word. They change it at will. They deny it. They refuse to obey it. Sadly, even in our holiness churches, there is a lack of respect for God's word. Maybe we do not realize what a privilege it is to have it available. Maybe we do not realize what a miracle it is. If you have never read the book, The Living Book, by Charles, is it Charles Kahn? Charles Kahn? The, one of the, or the first uh, overseer of the church of God. If you've never read that book, you need to read that book. Uh, the Living Word. I, I don't know if you can even get it anymore. I'm not sure, but I'm telling you, it tells you how the Bible was put together. It's amazing, truly amazing. But if we realized how many people died, of course, Jesus being the number one, but the many people that died just so you could have this in your hand, I, it blows my mind every time I think about it. It's amazing. It's truly divine. And what a privilege it is that we can hold it, we can read it, we can take it in any time we want. You know, back in the Old, Old Testament days, they waited, had to wait on God to speak out of heaven or speak to another man speak to the prophet for them to hear what he had to say my oh my I just got to pick it up and read it and I can see and read what God has to say that's amazing to me brother Teague shared the story years ago and I'm, I hope I tell it correctly I might get a few of the details wrong the end result I believe is correct but I believe as a young girl or a, a man I can't remember who it was was uh, in a foreign country and had found out, knew that there was a missionary coming with a, a great supply of Bibles to be given 
and people from all over had heard the same words and they all traveled to this one location to meet with this missionary to get their Bibles. And of course, there was only a limited supply. And there was one man, I believe it was a man or a little girl, I can't remember, who was in that line who did not get a Bible. They ran out. And there was one of them that requested, can I just have the box that it came in? Oh, my word. And we have them laying in our house that we don't touch. I don't, my goodness. Oh, it's amazing what we've been given. Don't forget that. Pick it up. Read it. Pour your life into it and let it pour back into you. My goodness. Verse 9. Just a couple of minutes. Let's finish this up. Verse 9 in, four, in Deuteronomy 4. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life, but teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. Only you will stand before God for you. Just you. There's that word keep again here in this message. Take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently. It's about you when it comes to your own salvation being worked out in fear and trembling. Moses tells these people who will soon cross over Canaan. They're going to go into Canaan without him. He says, keep the statutes of the Lord and keep your souls. Guard your lives. Guard what's been given to you. Don't frivolously uh, pass it away with some sort of temporary fixer or, or fill of sin in this life. It's not worth it. Amen. It is worth it to keep everything that's been poured into you. Keep it on your knees. Keep it in the pew. Keep it listening to the word of God around these altars. Build altars at home. We cannot impress it enough into the adults because from here it goes into the next generation. Moses reminded the children of Israel of their privilege, and we are doing the same today, of this privilege. Uh, if you know the value, you will hold it close, and verse 9 will tell us what we will do with it. We'll keep it so close that we're going to make it, and we'll keep it so close that the next generation is going to hear it and see it and receive it. My goodness, how important is it that we sign up on this sheet out front that you can pour into a young person's life I'm telling you, it's a blessing. I love being a part of the Christmas play because it's my time with the kids. I don't get much time with them because of different things going on, but I love the Christmas play because I love to pour into them anything and everything that I can for that short amount of time about who God is. At that particular time of year, in specifics, but all the time, we need to pour into them. Um... Jesus even said, you know, to let the little children come unto me. It was important for him to speak to those children. And so many children today don't, they don't know Jesus at all. They only know Jesus through your life, through my life. Those in this church, but those outside this church, those in your family that are not churched, those that are around you that are not churched, pour into them. When I hold my grandbabies, which I don't get to hold them as much as I want, but when I hold them, when I'm rocking them, when I'm squeezing them, I am praying for them. Put some fire in these youngins. Put some Holy Ghost fire in these children. This next generation needs the truth and let it be found in my grandchildren. Pray over your grandchildren that way. Hold fast to them. Love on them. And while you're doing so, pray over their souls and live it before them. That generation, oh, that need, they need the Holy Ghost. My goodness, and this church, this, uh, let me just, I thought about this way, I'm sorry, quickly, I was waiting on a, a woman and her daughter just this week, I'll put it that way, and they seemed to be close, I mean, they were, they were talking and stuff, and the little girl was probably, I say little girl, she's probably in her 20s, but Pearson's, and she was just pitiful, I saw how pitiful, she looked so bound, and she was so timid, even though she looked like she was trying to be fierce, you know. And she was so timid, just in the bank, she was so timid. I thought, how sad that we would pour into our children that that will take them straight to hell. 
and not give them any hope in this life. If that's all my children had to cling to was to be like the world or to uh, pursue things that are temporary, oh, shame on me. Shame on me. I, I want to do something that will affect the next generation. I want to live my life to please him. I, there's two words I want to hear, good and faithful and servant. Let me throw that in there too. I want to be a servant, but that servant has got to be described as good and faithful uh, in the end. I love y'all. Let's go to heaven together. Let's have church together today. That's why we came. Amen. Praise the Lord.
try to wrap myself around the thought of you. I stretch myself so far, I nearly come unglued. You hold the universe inside your head, and still you thought of me. I can't believe. Good morning. Welcome to South Asheboro Church of God. So good to see you in God's house today. Good to have those watching online. Let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer as we open up the service. Thank you, Lord. Precious Heavenly Father, Lord God, we come to you today. We just thank you and we praise you, Lord God, for this opportunity to be in your house today. We thank you, Lord, for your presence, Lord God. We thank you for your promise. We thank you for your power. We thank you, Lord God, for the salvation, sanctification, and baptism of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for your heart. Sunday school lesson, you know, we need to make sure we're reading our word. You know, it's a privilege to be able to read the word of God. It's life. Why wouldn't we want it? We want to, we need to read the word of God. Yes. Good to have Sister Sheila with us this morning. Amen. Uh, well, at this time, the men's choir come to minister in song. We get the men's choir to come. Amen. Praise God. Worship with them today. You shake them. Mm -hmm.
Amen. There's power in the blood of the Lamb. Are you hungry for that power? Are you hungry? Are you hungry today? What are you hungry for? What are you thirsty for? John 6 and 33 said, For the bread of God he is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. 6 and 35 said, Jesus said unto him, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. So if you're hungry and thirsty today, you know, reach out to God. You know, he is that power. He is that bread of life. He is that that satisfies a thirsty soul. Live, 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 live for him. Serve him. Worship him. Let's continue to worship him. We'll get our ushers to come and receive their tithe and offering. Praise God. Brother Matthew, would you pray with us time of worship? Well, look what the Lord has done. Come on and look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. Blessing you, faithfulness and giving. The announcements, let's continue. To, we're running out of time. We need to get these uh, gifts, Christmas gift for our pastor envelopes turned in. You need to have them in by when, sister? By next Sunday. We'd like to have them in by Wednesday night, but you know, if you can by Wednesday night, if not, next Sunday will be our last opportunity to be able to. to get. Also, uh, youth night sign up sheet out in the vestibule. Invest in our youth. Like Sister Amy said, it's a pleasure to be able to invest into them. To pour into them, yes, you know, because you know we, we want them to, if we want them to do right. We need to make sure that we're giving them the information they need to do right. Yes, Praise God. Uh, also, uh, I think Lily can come on up and get the two dollars because I don't see anybody else in here. <laughs> so we don't even have to draw this morning, bro. We'll give it to Lily today. Okay, I think that's all the announcements. Uh, we got a lot of prayer requests. Brother Eddie, would you come up here? Because after I'll give these prayer requests, I want you to pray over them. You come on up here, brother. Amen. Let's continue praying for Brother Mike Woolard. You know, brother Mike Woolard, he had some surgery, and he needs a healing. God will come give him a you know, quick recovery. Uh, also, continue praying for Sister Sandra. You know, we got to text my pastor, Sister Sandra. She's hurting, and she needs you know our, the church to lift her up. Yes. You know, I'm believing God's completely. He's going to completely heal her. The old devil's fighting. He don't want her to be healed, but I know God's able to heal her, yes, he and He's going to heal her. Yes. Praise God. Uh, let's continue lifting up brother and sister Ball in prayer. Also, uh, pray for Sister Sharon. She's sick today. She, she went to work this morning, but she came home and she called me. Told me she said, "I'm sick. I'm, I'm going home." So. Pray for her because she doesn't go home unless, you know, she's very sick. So pray for her. Uh, said she thinks she has a sinus infection. She did, she did a COVID test, and it was negative. So it's probably a sinus infection. But whatever it is, God's able to touch her. Uh, also continue to pray for Brother Key Speed and also for Pastor Key's wife. Uh, pray for Sister Ball's ex-brother-in-law's family. They found her ex-brother-in-law dead. Also pray for Myrtle Moss for strength and healing. This is a 
uh, request Sister Blanche gave in. Also for Betsy Kivett for salvation. She's a 90-some-year-old woman. She needs salvation. Also, uh, I want to pray for Sister Anna's friend, uh, Katie's cousin, who has some heart issues going on with her. Also pray for Brother Brasson. He's sick in his body. Also pray for little Oliver. that He'll get back to 100% healthy. Uh, so at this time, Brother Eddie, would you come and lead us in prayer? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Precious Heavenly Father, Lord, I love you. Lord, Lord I can't even walk without you. continue to worship as get uh, Sister Amy, Sister Andrea, and Sister Ashley to come minister in song this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. And those are going back to get Sister Andrea. Has anybody got a testimony this morning you want to stand and testify what the Lord's done for you? Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Yesterday, the men went out to eat, and we was kind of reflecting on how God, how far God has brought Brother Zach. I remember when he first started coming to church and everything, sometimes I'd give him a ride home. He didn't have a ride. Today, he's got a brand-new Dodge truck out there. And the Lord blessed him and blessed him with a wife and a home, and the Lord has really brought him a long way. Look what the Lord has done. Yes. Praise God.
How great is our God. Our minds cannot even fathom how great our God is. Uh, you, do you ever just try to think about how great God is? You, you read his word, and he stretched out the stars and the skies and the universe and everything. You know, he stretched it out. That's nothing to him. How great is our God? We, our minds cannot even fathom it. Praise God. We will serve a mighty God. This time I'm going to service our pastor, Brother Sheldon. Bless you. Amen. Lift your hands in love on him this morning. He is great. Amen. He's greatly to be praised. We're honored to be in his house this morning. I'm thankful the Lord has afforded us the privilege to be able to come to church. Uh, I say this often, and it's the truth. There are people that would love to switch places with me right here this morning. There are folks that would love to be sitting right where you are today. From church to church and from place to place, people that just they can't get out, they can't go, and uh, they would love to be where you are. We're able to be right here, and we ought to give him thanks and praise for that. Amen. I'm glad that God loves us. He cares about us. I'm glad that he saved us. I enjoyed that testimony from Brother Zach. Uh, I don't know everything about his past, but I know some of it. And uh, I was here pastor when he started coming to this church, and I knew where God brought him from and what God's done in his life. Amen. And uh, God's been so good to every one of us. He's brought us all a mighty long way. We're not there yet, but God's taken us there. Amen. And we're going to make it to heaven by his grace. We're glad to see all of you in the house of God this morning. I appreciate our teachers. Give all of them a hand of appreciation. They did a great job today in our classes. Thankful for them. Good to see uh, Sister Sheila back there. Glad to have her with us today. Appreciate you. It's good to see Brother Oliver back. I've missed him. I, I squeezed on him, and then I just squeezed a little more. I love this family. These are wonderful people. Amen. And uh, I'm glad he's able to be back in the house of God. Keep praying for my mother. She's really going through a hard time right now with this sickness, and uh, she just needs a miracle. And God's a miracle worker. And I want you to continue to pray. I appreciate all your prayers, and she's thankful for them. And we just need God to do something wonderful here, and we're believing that. That's his word, and we're just holding on to that. Amen? And uh, keep praying for Brother Mike Woodard. He's, he's been through a terrible time. He's going through a hard time trying to recover from this surgery. Dee Dee called me on Friday night, and he was literally screaming in the background, begging somebody to get him some help. He was in so much pain. And uh, I don't like to hear anybody hurting. I don't like to know anybody's having to suffer like that. And uh, if that don't break your heart, something wrong with your heart. Right. We shouldn't want anybody to have to suffer. And uh, he was doing a little better yesterday, <clears throat> still in a lot of pain. He's had a very serious surgery, and uh, he just needs God to help him. Amen. Continue to pray for Brother Speed. He's battling cancer. Sister Key um, battling that cancer. There's a lot of people sick right now. And I'm glad that God will let us go through those times. None of that's pleasant at the moment. But it's all working for his good and for glory. Amen. For our good, his glory. So we just want to pray and believe God's going to bring them through that, going to heal them and help them, and that something good's going to come out of it. Amen. That's his word. Praise God. Glad you're here this morning. If you have your Bible, stand. Enjoyed the men's fellowship yesterday. We've had two weekends of it. Pastor's council last weekend, and then the, uh, all the men yesterday were invited. And uh, we've had two weekends of free food. And uh, we appreciate those that paid for our meals. And uh, I said, somebody's living right. Praise God. You get free food. you got to be doing something right. The devil don't bless you with such. Amen. And uh, we just had a great time of fellowship yesterday, and uh, some of us gained some weight. Is that right? Say amen, brethren. Amen. We shouldn't get on that scale after you go there, but we did, and I, I did too. And uh, God, God's going to help us. Amen. Food was great. Fellowship was better. <clears throat> I was also glad to see some of our young men went with us yesterday. And uh, Josiah had a day off from modeling, and he was able to be with us, so we were thankful for that, that time he had with us. And uh, we just I just love these young men, amen. I want them to be involved. And that when I say it's for the men, that's including the young men. And uh, I'm very proud of these boys, amen. First Thessalonians chapter 4, first, if you'll hold your place there. Melissa, you're right, right where you are. 
1 Thessalonians chapter 4, hold your place, and we're going to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. That should be up here behind me. And we're going to read from there first, and we'll go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I want to say thank you again to Sister Melissa. She has done an outstanding job uh, with our screen work, and I'm proud of her and appreciate her. She's smarter than I am, and uh, she has just picked this right up. And uh, so she's faithful, she's here, and uh, I appreciate what she's doing back there. Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you. <clears throat> We're glad again to be in the house of God. Lord, I need your touch this morning as we've already prayed and sought you today, God, that you'll help us for the next little while. Uh, please don't make me try this on my own this morning. <clears throat> I can't do this by myself, God. I wouldn't want to try this by myself, Lord. I've spent the proper time in praying fasting and trying to hear from you and I believe I have your mind today Lord I believe this is what you want me to say to this congregation I pray people will be helped in this house this morning <clears throat> folks are going through some real difficulties right now uh, some trying times some tests of their faith God and I pray Lord they'll be encouraged today I pray for those watching online <clears throat> those that can't be in the house of God Lord that you would Touch them this morning, God, and let them be lifted up today. I, <clears throat> we pray for strength, Lord. I, I pray again you'd touch our voice, God. I need a healing in my voice. I pray you'd help us now. Draw to the elders, God, and everything rendered. <clears throat> let it be for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. How many is enjoying the quarterlies? Amen. I, I am too. I think it's... A, been a wonderful thing, and uh, I just uh, really enjoying the teaching. Amen. We have some great teachers here. First Corinthians chapter fifteen, begin reading in verse fifty-one. The apostle Paul said, "Behold, I show you a mystery. I'm going to reveal this to you. It's not a mystery to us now." He said, "We shall not all sleep. That means we shall not all die, but we shall all be changed." In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall I put on incorruption, and this mortal shall I put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that's written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory. He's talking about over the sting of death and over sin. He gives us victory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Can you shout amen? <clears throat> verse Thessalonians chapter 4. We'll begin reading in verse 13. <clears throat> the Apostle Paul said, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. He's talking about those that have died in Christ. Not the sinner, but the saint that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven, with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, this is the second time that the Apostle Paul has included himself in this. Then we, which are alive. That tells us the Apostle Paul expected the Lord to come in his day. He was not looking to go by that grave. He believed the Lord's coming was so near that he would be alive on this earth when Jesus came. Now, that's been nearly 2,000 years ago. How much closer are we to the coming of the Lord right here and right now? If the Apostle Paul looked for his return in his day, 
how much more should you and I look for his return in our day? Verse 17, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever, so shall we always be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Can you give God a hand of praise as you're seated this morning? Amen. I think about these that are dealing with sickness. My mom called me last night, wanted us to pray with her on the phone, and we did. And they're dealing with sickness right now. And I thought just the sound of a trumpet. And all of that's going to end. The sound of the trumpet from heaven. And all that that people are dealing with and fighting and facing right now is all going to be over. That song says we're soon to be done with troubles and trials. Can you say praise the Lord? I want to preach to you this morning on this thought after the last trumpet. After the last trumpet. In our scriptures here this morning that we've shared with you we find the Apostle Paul writing about a future event that we as the church recognize and know as the rapture. We know that the rapture is that great event when the Lord Jesus Christ himself is going to return in the clouds above this earth. and He's going to catch away all the saved people in this world. While his return is spoken of many times in that New Testament. There are only three passages there in the New Testament that speak in uh, any detail that deal with the subject of the rapture. The first two of those we've read to you here today in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, then in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. The other uh, subject that deals with the rapture is found in Revelations chapter 4. Verses 1 and 2, and the Bible says, and After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard were, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately, this is John here, and immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, I, and one sat on the throne. Uh, we know here that John is a type or a symbol uh, of the church. And the Bible shows us him being called up into heaven. The Bible said the Lord said, come up hither. And immediately he's in the presence of God. Him being called up into heaven uh, before the tribulation begins here on the earth. Most scholars believe that this is a type or a, a symbol of the rapture of the church. I want you to notice here in these three different passages uh, that deal with the rapture, there is a common theme that punctuates each one of these references. That common theme is the mention of the word trumpet. We're told in the word of God that the rapture will be a time heralded uh, by the sound of trumpets. Now, there is something very significant about the trumpets in the Word of God. In the Bible, trumpets were used for four specific purposes. First, the trumpet was sounded to proclaim victory. Second, it was used to call an assembly or a gathering. Third, it was called or used to announce a warning. And fourth, a, a trumpet was sounded to call the troops to battle. It's very clear to us in the Word of God how the trumpets fit in to the rapture because all four of these same events are going to take place on this earth when the rapture takes place. When that rapture happens, victory is going to be announced over this world by the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. When that rapture takes place, the saints are going to be called to assemble themselves together in the presence of the Lord. When the rapture takes place, the trumpets are going to announce a warning of judgment to this world found in Revelation. When the rapture takes place, the angelic troops are going to be summoned into battle. 
in that day, in the, the society of that day, uh, uh, trumpets were heard on a daily basis. This was a common sound in that day. That Roman army occupied most of the civilized world at that time. Uh, and that Roman army, they used trumpets uh, to carry out the movements of their troops. When a Roman legion moved in that day, there would be three blasts from the trumpet. That first blast of that trumpet would tell the troops to strike their tents and prepare to move. Then the second trumpet would sound, and that second trumpet would alert them to fall in line and to line up. Then the third trumpet would sound, and that third trumpet uh, would be a signal for them to move out uh, and begin to march. They're moving from the place that they are in. I want you to notice here what the Apostle Paul says uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52, uh, that we've read to you today. He tells us as the church, as the bride, uh, as the saints of God, uh, that we are leaving at the last trump or the last trumpet. In other words, just like that third blast of that trumpet uh, signaled that Roman legion uh, that it's time to move out and march, the Apostle Paul is telling us here that at the last trump, when that last trumpet sounds, uh, it's going to be the signal for the church uh, that we are moving out of this place that we're in. When that last trumpet sounds, uh, we are moving up to glory land. I can tell you here this morning, just any day now, uh, the church is going to hear the sound of a trumpet. That last trumpet's going to sound, uh, and according to the Word of God, and I believe it's true, uh, when that last trumpet sounds, uh, we're going to be called up out of this old world. We're going to be seized by the power of God. We're going to be snatched away uh, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, we're going to move out of this old sin-cursed uh, and wicked world. Uh, and the Bible said we're going to forever, uh, we're going to always be with the Lord uh, in that glory land. Somebody ought to shout amen. I wonder today, are you listening uh, for the sound of the trumpet? Uh, are you looking for Jesus Christ uh, to come again? Uh, a day just like today, uh, the trumpet's going to sound, uh, and in the moment and the tweaking of an eye, we're going to be changed. Uh, we're going to tell this old world goodbye. Somebody give him praise uh, in this house today. Ha, 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 ha. I'm trying to save my voice, so if you'll help me a little bit here today, we're going to have some church around here this morning. Jesus is going to come soon. I couldn't help but think last evening when my mom called me and talking about the condition she's in, she said, Son, I don't know how much more of this I can take, this pain that I'm having to go through. And I couldn't help but think about what I was going to be preaching today uh, and how just in a, in a moment's time, in the twinkling of an eye, that's faster than a blinking of an eye, that the trumpet's going to sound uh, and we're going to shed all this. We're going to leave all this behind. Listen, I, I love my family. Don't you I care about my family? I love my saved family I, and I love my lost family. I, amen. But when that trumpet sounds, I, my saved family and myself, I, we're going to get up out of this old world. I can't help what happens to my lost family. That's the choice they're making. I, but when that trumpet sounds, I, we're going to leave sickness instantly. I, we're going to leave sorrow instantly. I, we're going to leave sin that we're surrounded by instantly. I, we're going to leave Satan. I, we're going to leave this old world, I, and we're going to glory land. I'm telling you, I, read the book. Heaven is a far better place I, than what we're living in right here. I, and we have a hope uh, for the sound of a trumpet uh, that will usher us out of this old world. Somebody give him a hand of praise this morning. Hallelujah to God. He said that the last trump or the last trumpet's going to sound. The Lord's going to come and we're going to leave this old world. I want you to notice some things that's going to take place after that last trumpet will sound. 
after that trumpet sounds, Brother Zach, Jesus will return just like he said that he would. The Apostle Paul said here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. Before Jesus ever went to that cross, he promised his disciples uh, and he promised us as his children uh, that he would return for us one day. He said in John 14, 1 through 3, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. That doesn't mean he's there right now with a hammer and a hard hat uh, building mansions. I believe those mansions are already prepared. When Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, he's talking about the cross, the price he's going to pay. Before he died on that cross, the righteous went to the heart of the earth, a place called paradise. Uh, but when Jesus died on that cross and shed his blood, uh, now he prepared a way uh, that for the righteous to be able to go into the heavens, uh, into the presence of the Father. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. That was the promise he made to us, to his disciples, uh, to us as believers before he ever died on that cross. I'm going away. I'm going to prepare a way for you to be able to go to heaven. Uh, and I'm going to come again. And when I come again, I'm going to receive you unto myself. Uh, that where I am, there ye may be also. Then he reaffirmed this promise to the apostle John in Revelations 22 and 20. He said, He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. And then the, uh, the apostle John responded and he said, Amen. Even so come Lord Jesus. Three times in Revelation chapter 22, uh, Jesus declares, I'm coming quickly. These are the last words that he spoke to the church uh, that we can be uh, reaffirmed of his promise uh, that he is coming again. The Bible said after he was crucified and rose from the dead, as he ascended back into heaven there and sat down at the right hand of the Father, the angelic messenger there declared to his followers uh, of the hope of his return again. They said in Acts 1, verses 9 through 11, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he, Christ, was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. While they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up to heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven uh, shall so come in like manner uh, as ye have seen him go into heaven. The Bible tells us when the last trumpet sounds, uh, Jesus will come again. He will come to the clouds. Uh, and when he steps in the clouds, uh, he's going to rapture the church of a living God. The devil denies it. The world does not believe it. Even some church folks doubt it, but we know it's true that one day soon and very soon the trumpet's going to sound. Jesus will step out in the clouds. There's going to be a shout from the Lord and the church of the living God is going to be caught up out of this old wicked world. Amen. To that I say praise the Lord. To that promise I say hallelujah. To that promise I say thanks be unto God uh, that gives us the promise uh, of this victory. I'm telling you this old world uh, is not our home. Amen. Don't you let this world drag you down. Uh, don't you let these times discourage you. Uh, keep on looking up. Jesus is going to come. Uh, our redemption uh, is drawing nigh. Hallelujah to God. Jesus is going to come. We're going to leave all this world behind. Amen. After the last trumpet, 
The Bible then tells us all of those departed saints of God, those that have died in Christ, they will be resurrected. Thought about Sister Granny. We're coming up and it doesn't, doesn't seem possible. We're coming up on a year. The day before Christmas Eve, she left this world to go be with the Lord. That's almost a year ago now. How quickly that time has gone by. Her body, her lifeless body, that skin tit's been in that grave now for almost a year's time. Her soul or spirit is there with the Lord. You've got loved ones who've gone by that grave, who live for God, who love the Lord. Some of them, that body's been in that grave a long time, a lot of years. Some of them, the only thing left that, that shows they were even on this earth is nothing but bones uh, anymore. But the Bible tells us after that last trumpet that all of those who died in Christ, they're going to get up out of that grave. There is going to be a resurrection. The Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 13 that all of those saints that have departed, they are asleep. He said, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep that you sorrow not even as others uh, which have no hope. Here he's not speaking about soul sleep, uh, but he refers to the fact that those bodies, those, those people that have died in Christ, those bodies are asleep. That body's been laid back in the grave, but it's not going to remain there forever. That body's gone back to the dust from where it came because of the curse of sin. The Bible said when a child of God, I've been there by that bedside many times down through the years of the ministry. When that child of God breathed that final breath, uh, that heart stopped beating, uh, and, and they leave this world, their spirit immediately uh, is ushered into the presence of the Lord. The Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5 and 8, we are confident, I say, willing rather to be absent from the body uh, and to be present with the Lord. He said in Philippians 1 and 23, For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. All of your loved ones, all of my loved ones who've died in Christ, who were born again, who live for the Lord, amen, they are in the presence of the Lord right now. I say it every time I preach a funeral of someone who's gone on to be with the Lord. Uh, we wouldn't want to bring them back for nothing. Uh, and they wouldn't want to come back to this old world for nothing. Uh, they have made it home. They have crossed the finish line. They fought a good fight. They finished their course. They kept the faith. And now they're in the presence of the Lord. They're not in any more pain. They're not having to suffer anymore. They're not having to deal with what you and I are dealing with here on this earth. They are in a perfect place in the presence of a perfect God. Somebody say amen. That body goes back to the grave because of the curse of sin. But the apostle Paul said after that last trumpet and Jesus comes into the clouds of glory. Those who have departed uh, are going to be raised incorruptible. And when they left that body behind, uh, it was going back to the ground. Uh, but when Jesus comes again, uh, Jesus is going to bring their spirits with him from heaven. Uh, that spirit's going to be reunited with that body uh, in that grave, wherever that body may be. Uh, it may be in an urn sitting on your countertop. Uh, amen. It may be at the bottom of the sea. Uh, it may be in the, in the belly of some kind of animal. Uh, but when Jesus comes again, and uh, he's going to bring that spirit back. That spirit's going to be reunited uh, with that body and instantly uh, it's going to be a brand new glorified body uh, that cannot know disease, uh, that cannot know death. Uh, come on, say amen to me. Uh, I said they're going to get up out of that grave uh, and they're going to be alive forever, uh, forevermore. That is the hope that we have. Uh, after that last trumpet sounds, uh, your mama, your daddy, uh, your 
husband, your wife, uh, that child, that grandchild, that aunt, that uncle, uh, that church member, that pastor uh, that went by the grave that loved God uh, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, they're going to get up out of that grave. Uh, they're going to be resurrected uh, and they'll live on forever and forever. Uh, that is the hope that we have uh, as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, hallelujah to God. Ah, blessed Lord. They breathed that last breath. They left this old body behind. They left that skin tent. They're in the presence of God. Their spirit is there with him. But when Jesus comes again, when the rapture takes place, he's going to bring that, that spirit back. That spirit's going to meet that body again. And that body's going to get up a brand new glorified body that will never die and it'll be a body like the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, and it'll meet him in the air, and it'll go to glory land. Somebody say amen. Just like Jesus stood there at the grave of Lazarus there in Bethany and cried out for Lazarus to come forth, and the dead got up and came forth, that's what's going to happen when the last trumpet sounds. Jesus is going to shout, the Bible says, and all those departed saints in the grave, they're going to rise up and they're going to live forever. Can you say amen? The Bible tells us after the last trumpet, not only are the dead in Christ going to be resurrected, not only are your loved ones that went by that grave in Christ going to get up again, but the Bible said all the living saints are going to be raptured out of this old world. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 17, And then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 52, as we read, the Apostle Paul said, Behold, I show you a mystery. I'm going to reveal this thing to you here now. We shall not all sleep. That means we're not all going to die by that grave. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Talking about the child of God. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, that means those in the grave are going to get up uh, and we which are alive and remain, uh, we shall be changed. Amen. I don't know how to explain this to you, but I tell you it's the truth. And when that trumpet sounds, if I'm living uh, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, this body is going to be transformed. This old body of flesh, this old body that feels pain, uh, this old body that gets sick, uh, this old body that ages and gets old. Uh, if I'm alive when the trumpet sounds, and suddenly, instantly, uh, this body is going to be glorified. It's going to be a brand new body just like those in the grave are going to get a brand new body. We which are alive at the coming of the Lord, we're going to be changed. Our body is going to be changed instantly. It's going to be a glorified body. But my blessed Lord, uh, there's going to be no more pain in these bodies. Uh, it seems like the older that you get, uh, the more pain that you deal with. Uh, amen. As the days wear on uh, and these bodies age and they give out and eventually give up. Uh, when the Lord comes, uh, all of that's going to change very quickly. Uh, we're going to get a brand new body free from disease. Uh, we'll never deal with sickness again. Uh, we won't have to worry about arthritis, uh, diabetes, heart conditions. Uh, we won't have to worry about all these things that we deal with now. Uh, it's going to be a brand new body like the body of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and we're going to live on forever uh, and forever we will always be with the Lord. Somebody lift up your hands uh, and give him glory for the hope that we have. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Oh, we're waiting on the sound of a trumpet. A shout from the Lord. The voice of the archangel. And all of this is going to change. Suddenly, we're going to be caught up. 
The rapture, the word rapture is not found in the Bible. But it does come from the Latin translation of the Greek word harpezo, which means to be seized, to be caught up. That's where we get that word rapture from. The Apostle Paul uses that term caught up. It means to snatch away, to seize with force, to claim for oneself. This just tells us it's going to be a sudden event. It's going to happen very quickly when the children of God, those throughout the ages, those that's gone by the grave and those that are alive are going to be snatched from this world with force and claim for the glory of God. Somebody give him praise this morning. Ah! The dead in Christ are going to rise up out of those graves. And we which are alive and remain will be glorified instantly. These mortal bodies are going to be changed to immortal bodies. These bodies that are destined to perish are going to take on the body like the Lord Jesus Christ. A body that cannot experience death, decay, or disease. John said, First John 3 and 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear. Do you know that today? Do you have confidence in the word of God? Do you believe that blessed book? He said, but we know. The apostle Paul said, we are confident. We've got to have that confidence in God's word. I don't care how the devil tries to tries to muddy the waters. I, I don't care how the world denies it. I, you and I as the church, I, listen, we've got to believe what this word says. He said, and we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. That means we're going to get a glorified body like his. For we shall see him as he is. I'm looking for the Lord to come while I'm living. I'm not looking to go by the grave. Listen, I'm looking for the Lord to come today. Somebody say amen. If he comes today, my grandpa, my grandma, who's buried right up there in town, amen, when that trumpet sounds, they're going to get up out of that grave. We're not going up till they get up. They've got six feet below me to catch up, but when they catch up with me here standing on this earth, we're all going up together. We're going to always be with the Lord. I'm telling you, child of God, amen, there's no time to fall away. There's no time to drift. There's no time to backslide. It's time to press on in, to have a confidence in knowing if it don't come today, I'm going to be listening for the sound of that last trumpet, knowing that when it sounds, I'm going to tell this whole world goodbye. Somebody give him praise this morning. Hallelujah. (laughs) We're going up. With the resurrected dead. The Apostle Paul said that in the moment, come on, sister, and play softly, please. <clears throat> in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump or the last trumpet, the trumpet's going to sound. Don't allow the voices and the sounds of this old sin cursed world to cause you to lose and and get caught up in all the static out there. But you won't be listening clearly for the sound of that trumpet and the sound of that shout. Just as Jesus said to Lazarus, come forth. I believe he's going to say the same thing to the church. Come forth. Come up hither. We're going to hear that sound and we're going to leave this old world. Somebody stand give him a hand of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Raise your hands and love the Lord today.
Hallelujah. There's a song that says, we don't sing it here, I wish we would. <clears throat> Referring to the rapture. I'll be somewhere listening. Is that how it goes? <clears throat> wish I could sing it, I don't know the words, so I just know that part of it. I'll be somewhere listening. That means I'm going to be prepared when he comes. My ears and my heart's in tune with him. I'm not interested in what that world's doing out there. I want to see their souls saved. But what I'm interested in is making sure that I'm in tune with him. That I can hear clearly that sound. That I'm ready to leave this old world. That's what matters most. Let's make sure what matters most matters most to us. That my heart is in tune with God. That I'm walking in obedience to his word. That I'm living out day to day what I know is right by that book. That I'm walking in the light of his word. That I'm listening for that sound of that trumpet. I don't know. There's been so much sickness. These last, these last two or three years, and all the years we've been in the ministry, I've never dealt with so much sickness as far as the church family goes. Not just my church family, my preacher, pastor friends, and their churches, and people dying, leaving this world, and just sickness and sickness and sickness. But I remind myself of that. In just a moment, the Lord's going to come. He's going to free us from all that, that holds us here. He's going to free us from the things that troubles us here in this life. Going to free us from the, the, the sickness that we deal with. Anybody deal with sickness? Anybody dealing with sickness right now? Anybody deal with chronic sickness? There's no fun in any of it. If you're sick for a week, Brother Scott was sick, sick. Still dealing with some of that stuff, trying to get rid of that stuff. He'll get better. Others deal with chronic sickness. It's something you deal with daily. You're just part of your life. You just, you just deal with it. You just keep going. Others are in hospitals now. Others are in their beds right now, so sick in their bodies. But as saints of God, we have hope. This old world, if you get your, if you get your attention caught up in this old world, don't follow this old world. You're going to be discouraged and despondent. You're going to be blue all the time. You're going to be drugged down all the time. Jesus said, when you see these things come to pass, look up. Look up. He's coming. Our redemption is going to draw nigh. I'm looking for the Lord to come. Are you? I'm listening for the sound of a trumpet. That trumpet could happen this morning. Before we get home to even sit down to have lunch today. Sister Shelton. Has a big old turkey bird in the oven. I smelled him this morning. He was smelling real good, Brother Scott. I thought, Mo, that's going to be good after service today. But the trumpet could sound before we get home. And he's just going to be laying there. You and I are going to something much better, far better. The Apostle Paul said it's better to be with him, far better to be with the Lord. Every head bowed and every eye closed, please. I want to give you an opportunity. I don't know your hearts, but I want to make sure I'm going to give you an opportunity if you're not ready for that rapture. I don't ever want to close a service or close an altar invitation or go home without giving this congregation or those watching online an opportunity. Last Sunday morning, Shona, was that last Sunday morning, came down to these altars and gave her heart to the Lord. You don't know how happy I am to be able to call her Sister Shona. She's shy, but she's saved. It don't matter if you're shy, as long as you're saved, that's what matters. She's a good lady. And I'm proud of what God did in her life last Sunday morning. 
I want to give you an opportunity if you're lost, if you're not ready for heaven, if you're not ready for that rapture. Today is the day for you to make right. If you're watching online, if you're not ready for heaven, if you're if the Lord tarries and you watch this service later, you're not ready for that rapture. You can you can be, you can be saved. The Bible said in Romans 10 and 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. You don't call on the pastor. You don't call on church members. You don't call on grandma and grandpa. You call on the Lord. And the Lord will save you. If you're lost, if you're not ready for heaven, these altars are open. I want you to come this morning, if you would, please. Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? I'm not discouraged by these times. We go through discouraging times. We all do. But you don't have to live in a state of perpetual discouragement. Because we have a great hope. A wonderful hope. My blessed God. I wish I could convey it to you like I'm feeling it in my heart. We have a blessed hope as the children of God that Jesus is going to come for us. If he tarries, we may go by that grave, but you don't have to be afraid of death. But I'm not looking to preach one more funeral in this church before he comes. I'm looking for him to come today. And we're going to be there. Lord, God have mercy. Raise your hands and thank him and love him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This hope will make you live right. It'll make you live pure. Because you don't want to do anything to miss the rapture. You don't want to do anything to miss heaven. You want to make it when it comes. I want everybody to come and stand. If you're able, let's come and stand. We're going to pray for each other this morning. Pray for my voice. I'm having a real time with my voice preaching. I'm trying to be more careful with it. But I don't want to feel like I'm I don't want to feel like I'm chained up. But if the Lord tarries ten more years and I can still preach, I want to be able to preach, talk. I need a touch, I need a healing in my throat. I want you to pray for my mother this morning. Never seen her in a, in, a, in a condition she's in right now. She's in a fight. She's in a real fight. I want you to pray for Brother Mike Willard this morning. He's in a bad. He's in a real bad way. Pain. You don't want to see anybody suffer and hurt. It's terrible to watch that somebody have to suffer and hurt. I want you to pray for your families that are suffering, hurting. I want you to pray for the lost. I want you to pray for this church. I'm making this list to let you know I don't want to just pray just a couple minutes. I want us to pray. I want you to pray for the young people and the youth, not just in this church. I want you to pray for this lost and dying world. If another soul gets saved, it's worth everything. To see what happened to Shona, if I never preached another message to see what happened to Shona last Sunday morning, it was worth everything in the ministry to me. I hadn't seen a smile on her face in a long time. But she got a smile on her face again. I thank God for that. I want you to pray for my son-in-law, Branson. He's been very sick. Anybody else have loved ones that are sick right now? Family members? Anybody in here dealing with sickness right now yourself? Personal sickness? If you're comfortable in doing so, Take that one beside you in their hand, please. I want you to pray for them. Let's seek God this morning. You've got things in your heart that's not right with God. Right now is the time to make that right. If you've not been living like you know you ought to live, right now is the time to make that right. If you're not as close to God as you know you should be and can be, right now is the time to move on up with Him. 
You're not as strong as the, in the Lord as you were at one time. Now's the day to draw closer to Him. If you're not ready for that rapture, right now's the time to make ready. You say, Brother Shelton, you preach about that every service, about getting right with God. There's going to become a time when you won't have another chance. Right now you do. Let's make sure we got it right and we're ready. Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you for helping me preach this message today, Lord. 